What do ancient skulls from Mexico and California tell us about the first Americans? Buckle up, because the history of the Americas is being rewritten. Long before the rise and fall of the Maya, ancient hunter-gatherers explored and conquered the continent. The peopling of the Americas remains one of the most contested and captivating subjects in the study of human origins. At the heart of the controversy is a fundamental mystery. Why do the earliest human skeletons in the Americas look so dramatically different from modern Native Americans? Naya's skull had the face and head features one would expect of the earliest Americans. The earliest American skeletons have longer, narrower skulls than modern Native Americans, and smaller, shorter faces. In fact, the earliest Americans more closely resemble modern peoples of Australia and the Southern Pacific Rim. The discovery of Naya and the analysis of other early skulls from Quintana Roo has revealed something else as well. The earliest Americans were not a homogenous group. Instead, there was significant cranial diversity among them. Some resembled Arctic populations, others Europeans, some East Asians, and some Southeast Asians. As anthropologist Mark Huber notes, if the first Americans represent a single population, you'd expect them to look like the same. These individuals don't. In fact, these ancient individuals, sometimes called Paleo-Americans, exhibit cranial features more reminiscent of Australo-Melanesians and early Southeast Asians than of the rounder-faced populations seen in present-day native groups. Could they be the missing links in the peopling of the Americas? The discovery of Naya, a near-complete skeleton of a teenage girl found in a submerged cave in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, has become a pivotal piece in resolving this long-standing debate. Her DNA shows clear links to Native Americans, yet her skull tells a different story. This video explores Naya's discovery, her genetic and morphological profile, and how she compares to the La Brea woman, shedding light on the implications for our understanding of the first Americans. In an interview, anthropologist Dr. Silvia Gonzalez said, The new results are important because they question the traditional model for the peopling of the Americas with one single and homogeneous Paleo-Indian population migrating very fast from Beringia to Patagonia after 12,000 years ago. According to the study, the results indicate that at least two morphologically different Paleo-Indian populations were coexisting in the Americas between 12,000 to 8,000 years ago. Dr. Gonzalez continued, The skeletons may indicate that either more than one group of humans originally reached the American continent from different geographical points of origin, or that there was sufficient time for a small group of early settlers living in isolation to develop a different skull morphology. In either case, the early settlement history of the Americas appears to be more complicated and may date back thousands of years earlier than commonly believed, according to the new morphology data. Deep in the flooded cave system near Tulum, divers discovered the skeletal remains of a teenage girl in a vast, lightless chamber they named Hoyo Negro, Spanish for black hole. Alongside her were the fossilized remains of Ice Age megafauna, saber-toothed cats, ground sloths, bears, gomphotheres, and more. The unique preservation conditions of the underwater environment created a natural time capsule, not unlike the famous La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles, where another enigmatic early Native American woman was found. The La Brea woman, discovered in the early 20th century in the tar pits of Los Angeles, offers a critical comparison to Naya. Dated to between 9,000 and 10,000 years ago, she lived several thousand years after Naya, yet her skull retained many of the same Paleo-American features. Like Naya, she had a dolichocephalic vault, pronounced facial projection, a receding chin, and a low forehead. These traits place her firmly in the Paleo-American morphological tradition, even as other populations in North America began to exhibit more traditional craniofacial forms. La Brea woman's DNA has not yet been successfully extracted, so we do not know her haplogroup. But given her age, morphology, and geographic location, it is likely that she too belonged to the same Beringian-derived population as Naya. If so, her persistence of Paleo-American traits would suggest that certain regions, particularly along the Pacific coast, may have remained relatively isolated, preserving early morphological patterns, 
even as genetic diversity and adaptation shaped populations elsewhere. The similarities between the La Brea tar pits and Hoyo Negro add another layer to this comparison. Both are natural traps that preserved ancient humans alongside Ice Age megafauna. The La Brea woman may have died of blunt force trauma to the head, as evidenced by a very obvious crack on her forehead, and she was about five feet tall and between 18 and 25 years old. Her teeth showed that she ate grain, which was likely harvested and ground up in an early form of agriculture. In both cases, the death and burial of the individual were unknown, but both wound up in a place that would ensure their extraordinary preservation. These fossil-rich sites not only offer rare skeletal remains, but also preserve entire ecosystems, providing critical context for the lives of early humans in the Americas. The discovery site is like a miniature version of the La Brea tar pits, only without the tar and with better preservation. Naya's skeleton had lain undisturbed for over 12,000 years in a bell-shaped chamber more than 100 feet deep. The cave had once been dry, but as glaciers melted and sea levels rose at the end of the last ice age, it filled with water and preserved what is now the most complete Paleo-American skeleton ever discovered. She stood about four feet ten inches tall, delicately built, and was about sixteen to eighteen years old. She may have accidentally fell into the abyss, or she may have died during childbirth, and then her body placed into the cavern. There is evidence that she may have been a young mother at the time of her death. Her teeth and bones showed signs of hardship, including evidence of healed trauma and malnutrition. Most strikingly, she had a skull with long, narrow features, a low forehead, and a projecting face, characteristics typical of early Paleo-Americans, yet vastly different from the facial shape of most modern Native Americans. Establishing Naya's age required innovative approaches. Traditional radiocarbon dating was unreliable due to mineralization from long submersion in warm, salty water. Instead, researchers turned to uranium-thorium dating of calcium carbonate flowstones that had formed on top of her bones, establishing a minimum age of 12,000 years. Meanwhile, radiocarbon analysis of her tooth enamel yielded a maximum age of about 12,900 years. Taken together, these dates placed Naya firmly in the terminal Pleistocene, at the very edge of the last glacial maximum. Individuals from 9,000 or more years ago have morphological attributes distinctive from later Native American peoples. What we have here is the unique combination of a young female Paleo-American skeleton with a Native American DNA haplotype, said Professor Douglas Kennett of Pennsylvania State University. As stated, the radiocarbon dating of the DNA tooth enamel yielded a maximum age for Naya of 12,900 years ago. Unfortunately, we can't rule out that the tooth enamel is contaminated with secondary carbonates from the cave system, but we remove potential contaminants using standard techniques, Professor Kennett stated. We consider this a maximum age, and when combined with the uranium-thorium dates from the adhering speleothems, we argue that the skeleton dates between 12,000 and 13,000 years ago, so she is well placed as a Paleo-American, he concluded. This timing is crucial. Naya lived during a period when humans had begun to fully explore and colonize the American continents. Her remains are among the oldest ever found in the Americas and provide a unique window into the genetic and morphological diversity of these pioneering populations. Nonetheless, Paleo-native North American skulls, dating to 8,000 to 12,000 years, have also been found in Washington State, Idaho, California, Oregon, Florida, Nevada, Montana, Colorado, and Texas. The most startling aspect of Naya's remains is the disconnect between her morphology and her DNA. Her skull, with its dolichocephalic shape, the scientific term for long-headed, low forehead and prominent face, does not resemble modern Native Americans, who generally have broader, rounder skulls with flatter faces. Instead, her features recall those of early Southeast Asians, Australo-Melanesians, according to some anthropologists in Mexico and the United States. This resemblance fueled long-standing speculation that the earliest Americans may have come from a different source population, perhaps even an entirely different migration route, than later Native Americans. However, Mitochondrial DNA extracted from Naya's molar told a different story. She belonged to haplogroup D1, 
a lineage derived from Beringia and shared by modern Native Americans. This genetic signature confirmed that she was part of the same population that gave rise to indigenous peoples throughout the Americas. Her morphology was ancient and divergent, but her ancestry was not foreign. She was pure Native American. So, Naya is a missing link, filling in a gap of knowledge we had about the earliest Americans and modern Native Americans. This discovery showed, for the first time, that the Paleo-American cranial type was not indicative of a different origin, according to some researchers. Rather, it represented an earlier phase in the evolutionary history of Native American populations, a phase that later underwent significant morphological change. This degree of morphological variation has important implications. It suggests that different groups entered the Americas over time, potentially from slightly different source populations, or that once here, small groups underwent rapid evolutionary shifts due to genetic drift, founder effects, and local environmental adaptation. Morphology is a product of both ancestry and adaptation, and it can shift relatively quickly when populations become isolated or experience new ecological pressures. Yet despite this variation in skull shape and facial features, the genetic data consistently point to a common origin for these early groups in Beringia. The differences between Paleo-Americans and modern Native Americans then are best understood as evidence of an evolutionary process within a single lineage, not as signs of separate migrations or entirely different ancestries. The transformation from Paleo-American morphology to modern Native American features likely occurred gradually over thousands of years. As populations spread across vast distances and adapted to new environments, natural selection and gene flow would have shaped their physical traits. For example, in colder northern regions, flatter faces and lower nasal projections may have conferred advantages, as these reduce heat loss from exposed tissue. Meanwhile, cultural practices such as diet, climate, and cranial binding in some regions may also have influenced head shape. Over time, the distinct long-faced Paleo-American look gave way to the rounder, broader skulls we associate with modern indigenous populations. But the underlying DNA remained consistent, revealing deep continuity amid surface change. This evolutionary dynamic is not unique to the Americas. Similar patterns are observed in Europe and Asia, where early human populations displayed different morphology from their modern descendants. The transition from archaic to modern is rarely abrupt. It is a story of gradual change within connected populations. The case of Naya and her comparison with the La Brea woman supports a revised narrative of the peopling of the Americas. Rather than a single rapid migration of a uniform group, it now appears more likely that multiple waves of culturally and morphologically diverse humans entered the Americas over thousands of years. Some followed coastal routes, skirting glaciers along the Pacific Kelp Highway. Others may have entered later via interior land corridors as the ice retreated. These groups shared a common ancestry in Beringia, but their isolation, adaptation and cultural differentiation gave rise to the rich diversity observed in Paleo-American skulls. Over time, this diversity diminished, not because one group replaced another, but because evolutionary pressures converged on a more unified morphological type. The discovery of Naya has closed a major gap in the story. She proves that the earliest Americans, despite looking different, were genetically continuous with modern Native Americans. They were not outsiders, they were ancestors, but may have also been relics of an earlier migration. European skulls from 10,000 years don't look like modern Europeans, so in reality, this is not such a mystery. The debate over the first Americans is far from over, but the discoveries of Naya and the La Brea woman provide essential clarity. Together, these two women, separated by thousands of years but united in ancestry, show that early American populations were diverse in appearance but genetically connected. They force us to move beyond simplistic models of migration and embrace a richer, more complex story of human dispersal, adaptation and continuity. Thus, Naya is no outlier. She is a testament to how ancient DNA and careful archaeological work can bridge the gap between bones and identity. Her long, narrow skull once seemed to challenge the prevailing theories of Native American origins. But now, 
paired with her mitochondrial DNA and the context of other Paleo-American finds, she reveals a story of shared lineage and deep time. The La Brea woman likewise offers a powerful reminder that the Paleo-American morphology did not disappear overnight. It lingered, particularly along the coasts, where isolation could preserve ancient traits. If her DNA were ever recovered, it would likely confirm what her face already suggests. She and Naya walked the same path into history. As more skeletons are unearthed and more genomes sequenced, the picture of the first Americans will become clearer. But thanks to Naya and the La Brea woman, we already know this much. The first peoples of the Americas were not strangers to those who came after. They were their ancestors, but the question still remains, where did the Austronesian genetic component found in early South Americans come from? Are these skull morphologies consistent with an origin in Southeast Asia? Thank you for watching and please leave a comment and subscribe for more content.